Pickett's uh, experiment board for our junior program. Uh, I've always uh, people have always been asking me questions about uh, what sort of paper I use and and things uh, that go along. This is a codec photo paper, as you can see. Uh, it comes in a package like this. Uh, it's it's a gloss uh, paper, as you can see over there. Uh, it comes in different sizes. I normally buy A4 and uh, fill the whole page with circuits like this. And I just cut it out into strips and give it to the students to make their boards. Uh, this is passed through a laser printer so that the toner gets deposited onto the film uh, or photo paper basically and uh, just it's a reverse process we heat the board up heat this paper so that the toner gets uh, taken off from the paper and onto uh, a copper clad board you could pick this uh, product paper off uh, from the shelves at a supermarket for about uh, 15 to 18 dollars they get 20 sheets uh, which is pretty much a uh, big number uh, instead of the blue press and peel film that you buy you, you pay around 35 dollars for sheets so uh, this this by far I found to be the most effective way okay what I have is a stellar and a copper clad board so that I can clean off the board uh, and get any oxidation of the board so we're going to do this uh, pretty fast just doesn't matter which uh, way you are rubbing this so as long as all the tarnishes and the uh, oxidation goes off I'll just do the other end So you can now see that the board is shiny, it's clean. I've got a clothes iron and uh, this may seem like a steam iron but we're not using any part of the steam. Uh, we're trying to set the setting of this iron to the maximum uh, which is on the linen or cotton setting as you can see. And we let it uh, warm up, heat up. I'll grab my image now and uh, lay it flat and position it onto the strip of copper board and then I gradually start ironing from one end applying a little bit of pressure all the way to the end be sure to go from one side so that if there's any uh, air particles or air bubbles trapped underneath it can come out Uh, if there are edges that you want to pay attention to, then you just use the tip of the iron and just rub around the edges so that uh, whatever image that you want can come out. Now the ironing should take uh, about 45 seconds to a minute, basically, to get this image onto the board. There's two things that can affect the, the quality of the image. Uh, being produced is basically the amount of toner that you have used to transfer uh, normally I use the highest uh, DPI value and if your board is not clean then it will not stick properly now you have to be a little bit careful here I'll just switch the iron to low setting this board is hot therefore that's why I need to grab a piece of pl sorry I need to get the pliers and then chuck this board in the water Okay, what, what is happening is basically we're cooling off the board so that we can touch and handle the board. Now after the board is cool, what I will do now is peel this layer off. bit of pain when you have these gloves on okay, 
Here we go. So I've got it on one side. Now I'm peeling this off. I've actually done two circuits at once. You will still find some uh, bits of paper still sticking onto it. Uh, what I normally do is I'll just soak that back into the water. And you can gently rub, rub all the paper off. See that around very close places like the IC holder place, you'll have some bits of paper that is uh, left in there and it will be difficult to get it out. In that case, what we do is we take an old scour up head. I'll just dip that in, in the water. And I'll gently rub around the place where it has some paper bits stuck onto it. Now you'll notice that while you're doing so, you'll expose some bits of track which will appear black in some places, a little bit whitish. Don't have to worry too much about it because uh, it's just toner there in the first layer of paper that you're uh, scratching off. You can see my name uh, pretty clearly coming out uh, there and the pickaxe uh, label board. So all the letters and everything come out very nice. Check each track, uh, track and pads to see if they are all uh, intact. If not, we then use a sharpie pen uh, to fix those uh, tracks that are broken. But before you use the sharpie pen on this, make sure that the board is completely dry. Uh, otherwise, the pen mark starts fading away or uh, smudges a lot. If you look at up over here, there's some broken tracks right over there. Probably need to fix those. So overall board, uh, if you look, these are the only places I needed to touch. One, two, uh, three, four. Uh, per board, there's only two touches. Uh, uh, done by the Sharpie pen, basically. So the overall result is uh, extremely good. What we're going to do now is uh, we will chuck this board uh, into an etch tank uh, which contains a uh, ferric chloride. Right, here we have our etch tank. Uh, <coughs> just take it through the controls. That's the main power uh, button that supplies power to the entire uh, tank. We've got uh, these two buttons. Uh, this is the heater element button and the power button to the first tank here uh, which controls the tinning and this is the temperature thermostat control. We've got the wash tank button over here. Uh, we have the power button to the etching tank. Uh, we've got uh, the heater on, uh, sorry, the heater on and the edge data button over here. And again, the thermostat that controls the temperature. Uh, we have uh, ferric chloride already in here, mixed. Uh, So what I've done is now I've placed my board inside this uh, net uh, and then that just goes through into the acid and we'll just turn on the agitator now. Okay you can see this is our etched board now it's been taken out from the etching tank and uh, dried. Just focus on one of uh, the circuits here. Uh, uh, we'll go take this board now through the drilling process uh, and then the cleaning up. Let's, uh, take a little bit of uh, acetone and dip it into a piece of cloth. So we'll just wipe all of this uh, toner off. Uh, 
what we have here is a 400 grit uh, sandpaper uh, wet and dry and we'll just quickly rub this on top And uh, that's our PCB. Uh, there we go, that's our end product uh, with all tracks laid out, uh, ready for soldering. If you're going to solder at a later stage, I would suggest putting in a protective uh, liqueur or protective coating. Uh, to minimize any tracks getting oxidized uh, or leave it uh, with the paper or the toner on and then clean it only when uh, you're required to solder. Uh, thanks for watching.